أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشدا ومن يعسهما فلا يدر إلا نفس أما بعد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال عز وجل ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويعمرون بالمعروف وينحون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون ولا تكون كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات وأولئك لهم عذاب عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأفضة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتهابا أمين Today I'm going to talk about a very important topic and this topic is also a critique of our current day Islamic scholarship Without being too critical, I want to mention that there is a difference between enjoining good and forbidding wrong and creating ikhtilaf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Let there be a group amongst you that calls towards Islam, calls towards all good. وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And they enjoin the good things. وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid the evil things. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ رَآ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكِرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ Whoever sees something wrong, make him change, let him change it with his hands. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِي بِلِسَانِ Then if he can't, then with his tongue. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِي بِقَلْبِ وَذَلِكَ أَلْأَفُ الْإِمَانِ And if he can't, then let him think, think of the bad thing as bad in his heart, and this is the last level of faith. But this should not be confu confused with issues of ikhtilaf. In the Arabic language, there's a difference between ikhtilaf and khilaf. I'm not going to go into the linguistics of it. But after Allah says, because it's very easy to get confused, you can say, oh, I'm enjoining somebody to do the right thing, but you're just creating problems. Or you can say, I'm forbidding them from doing something wrong, but you're just creating fitna. So the distinction between Amr bil Maruf and al Munkar, enjoin people to the good and forbid them from wrong, how is that different from creating a problem? So this part of the Quran clarifies this. So Allah says, after saying, I'll repeat, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ Let there be a group amongst you that does what? يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ They call towards Islam. وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ They enjoin what is good. وَيَلْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid from what is wrong. وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And these are the successful people. But then the warning is, but don't mistake this to something else. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا Don't become of those people that cause divisions and create problems of difference of opinions. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْعِلْمِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the clear signs have come to you, then you become involved in the issues of ikhtilaf. What are the issues of Amr bil Maruf, Nihil al Munkar? And what are the issues of ikhtilaf, Tafarraq wa akhtalaf? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika lahum adabun azim. For such a people, there is a very painful, a big punishment. One of the problems is that the scholarship of today is not able to distinguish between issues of Amr bil Maruf, Nahin al Munkar, enjoining society to good and forbidding them from wrong on the one side, and issues of Tafarraqu wa Just so I'm clear, 
I want to repeat the translation of these two verses before I continue. Then I want to talk about what defines these two issues as separate issues. Allah says, Let there be a group amongst you that calls, calls towards good. Enjoining the good, forbidding the wrong. How important is this? The Prophet said, وسلم, that if there is someone in a ship, right? Someone's in a ship, and there are two levels to the ship, and the people on the bottom, they put a hole. If the people on top don't help stop the people on the bottom from putting a hole, what will happen to the ship? It's going to sink. The Muslims as a community, if they do not forbid the wrong, they will sink. So it's very important. Let there be a group amongst you that enjoins the good and forbids the wrong. They are the successful one. And don't be of those people that cause division. What is the Amr bin Maruf, Nayyan al Munkar? How is it different from those who cause division and differ from one another? This needs to be very understood. Because if you're not able to understand this distinction, which today in a lot of Islamic scholarship, we're not able to make this distinction. We think every little issue that you think you are right on is an issue of Amr bin Maruf, Nahyan bin Munkar. For example, I'll give you an example. I say, yes. The ahadith, majority of the ahadith, they say when you pray, you should do rafayat day. Majority of the ahadith, they say, this, this, the ahadith, the literature of the hadith literature says, when you pray, you should raise your hands before going to rakuah. They say you should raise your hands after you come from rakuah. But if this becomes your basis of, I'm on the truth because I do this, and you create this as a source of division between you and the others, then you're not doing Amr bil Ma'ruf Nihyan bil Munkar, you're doing what the Farrat wa Akhtalaf. Amr bil Ma'ruf Nihyan bil Munkar is for which issues? It is for the big sins. It's for what? The big sins and the big good deeds. And this has to also be understood. As a society, as a society, we don't want to polish the society to remove every little sin. Allah says three times in the Quran, Stay away from the big sins. From the big sins. If you stay, if you keep society away from the big sins, like for example, murder, magic, alcohol, disobedience to the parents, etc., etc. These are the big sins. If you call society to in, in be good to your parents, this is Amar bin Maruf, If you in, enjoin society to the big issues that are mentioned in Quran, this is Amr bin Maruf Nihyan bin Munkar. And when you get involved in issues of authenticity, asliya, I, I, me, and my shaykh, our understanding, we're going to Jannah, we don't know about the rest of you. You ever seen that? This is ikhtilaf. Don't be like those people that cause division. Because then they cause division based upon one issue or another issue or a set of issues. And those issues then they define these people. And they are not big issues, they're the smaller issues. And when this happens, Allah's punishment comes upon the Muslims. We're not concerned about the revival of Islam. We're not concerned about how can we show Islam as the true path to the majority of the world. We're not concerned about how are we as, what type of Islam are we leaving for the next generation. If we're not concerned about the youth, if we're not concerned about the big issues of the Muslims, and you're fighting over the smaller issues in which there's already difference of opinion from the beginning. You're fighting over this is how we pray. No, 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 this is how we pray. No, 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 this is the right way to do this. No, 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 this is the right way to do this. When you get in so much involved in the smaller issues 
that you become blind to the real issues. Now you are doing وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا And this is a very big religious disease that I am sure everyone in this room has experienced at one point or another. And this is one of the biggest problems of our scholars that they are not, the Islamic scholarship is not able to do what we call fiqh al-awliyat. They don't have a fiqh in understanding of priorities. What are the big issues and what are the small issues? What are the issues that are, if I agree with one opinion, I'll pray that way. But it, I will not, uh, because there's other opinions, I will not demean the other issues. I will not demean the other opinions. I will not belittle the other opinions. I will not say that my fiqh is right over your fiqh, your understanding of Islam at a personal level, and demean you. That is a very big problem. So, then also comes the question. Now, let me redefine this. There are issues Islam considers big issues. And there are issues which Islam considers subtle issues. Such issues that even the Prophet allowed difference of opinion amongst his companions. Even the Prophet didn't bother. You want to have two opinions? Have two opinions. I'll give you some examples. Right? The Prophet said, وسلم, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm mentioning this today because it's just a reminder for all of us. The Prophet said وسلم, that Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let him not pray Salatul Asr except at Bani Quraida. So the Prophet said, and you're hearing the Prophet say, if you believe in Allah and the Messenger, you have to pray Salatul Asr here. Well, now the companions are going, and the time for Asr is leaving, it's finishing. And Allah says in Quran, Inna salata kana ala al mu'minina kitab the prayers are a definite timing. So the time is going, you have to pray. And the Prophet said, if you believe in Allah and His Messenger, you have to pray there. What are you going to do? So some of the companions said, no, Quran says this. We have to pray in the time. So they prayed at that time. The others said, no, no, no. The Prophet said, don't pray till you reach there. So they prayed when they reached there. When they came to the Prophet, the Prophet said, both of you are right. Because this was not a big issue in the bigger scheme of the things. It was if now it wasn't like one group of the Sahaba started saying to the other group of the Sahaba, see, we're right, you're wrong. We have the right knowledge of Islam, you have the wrong knowledge of Islam. Another example. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, their two companions were traveling. Two companions were traveling. And they had no water. So they both did Tayyimam and prayed. Now, their journey ended at a point where they had water. So that one of them said, I'll, do, I'll redo my prayers. I'll do the wudu again and I'll pray again because I have water now, so I should pray again. So they disagreed. They went to the Prophet. The Prophet said, one of them followed my sunnah and the other one of them got twice the reward. And I'll share with you something really interesting. The sunnah is to pray once. To do the tayyamah and pray once, this is sunnah. But to do twice the reward is the one who prayed twice. In the explanation of this hadith, one day, one day, I read in the explanation of this, that see, twice the reward was better. Twice the reward was better. He's interpreting what the hadith is saying. And another time, another 10 years later, I opened another hadith book, same hadith, the Shah says, see the sunnah is better because the Prophet said that he, if he had two options, he would take the easier path. This is the hadith of the Prophet. Right? And so, you have the same hadith and you have two different opinions. These are issues that are important. Every issue of Islam is important. Everything the Prophet did is important. Everything about the Prophet is important. Everything in Islam is important. But, there are those things that are more important than others. Everything in Islam is important, but some issues are more important than the other issues. And to create division upon smaller issues, to create division amongst Muslims on what? The smaller issues. This is what happens. 
We get lost in the smaller issues and don't look at the bigger picture. We don't look at, okay, we are Muslims, we're minorities here, we have to make our brotherhood work. No, we're not going to look. We're going to look at the small nitpicking. We're going to see, oh, this brother doesn't pray this way, so then I'm not going to pray at this masjid. This is what You're using a small issue to create division. And division is a bigger sin than what? Than that issue that you're making an issue. Right? So, again, for the people that came later, this is what I'm talking about. Time is running out. I'll mention this point and then I'll continue. Allah says, let there be a group amongst you that brings people to Islam, shows them Islam, brings them to all good. Solve the problems of humanity like the Prophet did. Say, why are you killing this child girl for no reason? Why are you doing gambling? Why are you drinking alcohol? These are the issues that society needs. This is Amr bin Ma'ruf, Nayyad al -Munka. Call towards which is best, enjoying good and forbidding. They are the successful people. Bring out the big issues of society and deal with them. And don't be, then Allah says, and differentiate that from what? Then Allah says, Enjoining good and forbidding evil is not the smaller issues. Enjoining good and forbidding evil is the big issues. And then Allah says, don't be of those people who get lost in division amongst one another and differing with one another. For them is a painful punishment, a big punishment. Shall I continue my second khutbah?